Welcome back. Income splitting is a common tax strategy for couples, particularly when one partner is in a higher income tax bracket than the other. But our next expert guest says you need to be careful and be prepared to offer proof that your income splitting arrangement meets the rules set by the Canada Revenue Agency. We're joined now by Jamie Gollumbeck, Managing Director of Tax and Estate Planning at CIBC Private Wealth Management. Jamie, happy Monday morning to you, and thanks uh, for being here with us. This is going to be a useful conversation, I'm sure, for many of our viewers who either employ the strategy or are curious about doing so. Uh, let's begin with a, a, uh, an easy-to-understand uh, explanation of what income splitting is. Sure. So, very simply, income splitting is the moving of income from typically a higher-income family member to a lower income family member. And the reason why that's attractive, although generally not legal, unless you do it properly, is that, of course, in Canada, we have graduated progressive tax rates. That means that the higher your income, the higher your rate of tax. So if you've got, for example, a couple, which is the most common way that people like to income split, and you have one spouse or partner in the top bracket, uh, which could be as high as you know, 53, 54%, you have the other uh, spouse or partner who may not even be working, may have no income right now, they could be in a 0% tax bracket. So the opportunity to move income from the higher income spouse into the hands of the lower income spouse or partner is obviously very attractive. There could be a spread there in many situations of over 30% points of tax. So that's the attraction. Okay. Uh, and you mentioned a reference to uh, uh, legality. Uh, under what circumstances is this allowed? So in most cases of income splitting, you know, certainly between spouses or partners are not allowed because of the attribution rules. So if I give my wife money to invest, any income and gains that she earns actually attribute back to me. So it doesn't, doesn't work. There are, however, some legally sanctioned forms of income splitting. So for example, um, Canada Pension Plan, if you uh, have CPP and you're collecting CPP, you can do CPP sharing and you can elect to have each of you receive CPP. Uh, a more common one, of course, is spousal pension splitting. So again, if you're receiving a pension income, you can split up to 50% of that with your spouse. That also includes RIF withdrawals after age 65. Then when you get into the sort of grayer areas that we're gonna talk about, um, things like income splitting by hiring your spouse, either as an assistant if you're an employee, or perhaps as an employee of your own business if you're self-employed or have an independent business. It's certainly legal for a, for instance, a wife to hire a husband as an assistant or vice versa. Uh, uh, under what circumstances are those arrangements legit and what, what, and what circumstances are they not legitimate and what kind of documentation does the CRA want to see? Yeah, so certainly it's completely legitimate if they're actually doing work and you're paying them a reasonable wage. So you would sort of go out there and say, okay, what would it hire, what would it cost to hire an actual assistant, uh, whether it's $20 an hour, $25 an hour, $50 an hour, whatever it is, you document that, that is a fair market value wage, and then you pay your spouse or partner that same wage, but for the hours that are actually worked. So ideally, that spouse would keep a logbook of the number of hours worked, or if they're really a formal employee, you'd actually put them on payroll, you'd set up a T4, uh, you would deduct the Canada Pension Plan uh, for them potentially as well, and do source deduction. So there's all kinds of ways to making it you know, work, but again, it has to be ultimately a legitimate expense of the business, and uh, it has to be an amount that's actually paid to them, as opposed to sort of just a sort of a share of the household expenses being allocated to them. And so, and if you're in that position where you've legitimately uh, hired your your partner and you are paying uh, paying appropriately and deducting appropriately, you need to be able to document that to the tax authorities. Correct. That's absolutely right. And that was the issue in a recent case that I wrote about uh, where you had an individual that uh, hired their spouse. But uh, again, other than having a T2200, which is the form required by the CRA, uh, saying that he was allowed to hire, there was actually no uh, payments that were actually made to her account. There was no documentation of work that she did, the hours that she worked, or clients that she visited. And so, so just to, to finish where we began, uh, if, if it's a simple situation of a uh, uh, wife ha simply has a higher paying job than does husband, uh, and they are not, one is not working for the other, that's not a situation in which income can be split. Is that correct? 
That's right. So there is no general income splitting in Canada, unlike the U.S., where people file a joint tax return. You put both incomes on the same return in Canada. We each file individual returns, which is why you are not allowed to generally income split.